Hey everybody, today we're going to look at some vintage and pretty complex fire alarm pull stations manufactured by Honeywell. So the two pull stations that are on the left side of the video with the older Honeywell logo and the little window for the lights, these are from a product series called decimal code transmitters that Honeywell produced. The one on the far left hand side is a model number W854E. And the one in the middle is a model number W84A1002. Over on the right hand side, that's just a standard Honeywell um, S464A, so that's just a regular conventional pull station. And I'll show you why that's there in a little while. That's wired into the uh, other station in the middle. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these units. So if we take a look at the sides of these pull stations, you can see that it's very similar to a standard coded pull station. Um, the difference being that these are electrically driven. There's a 120 volt AC feed to the back of these units that activates the uh, motor for the code wheel. And you can see all the different settings for the codes that are on the code wheel. Obviously the one on the left has a coding sequence. Um, I guess spelled out on it with those little white picks while the one over in the middle only has two little of the tabs on it so I'll go more into that device later it's kind of odd it's actually really odd compared to the other one and that's why I have the other Honeywell station connected to it but anyways these are kind of similar to the simplex electrically driven coded pull stations they produced uh, I think the model number of mine is like 7424 dash to something along those lines um, but anyways the actual circuitry for the connections to the fire alarm panel zones that's all 24 volts DC um, but unfortunately we're not gonna have any alarms connected to these today because to be completely honest I still can't quite figure out how the wiring to connect the like alarms or zones on these work um, they're meant to be wired into a special zone on Honeywell panels from this era and I've been looking at the, the boards and how the wiring connections work. Um, and there's only two possibilities that I can think of as to why I can't figure it out. The first being that it's actually a supervised loop from the panel. So I'm thinking that instead of um, these pull stations really being wired in parallel with each other, the wiring connections might actually toss these in series, um, which would be weird, but I... I have to figure out how the, the end of line circuitry works, which I only have limited wiring diagrams, but if I can figure out how that works, um, maybe I'd be able to figure it out. The other thing is, um, when I was measuring the contacts for the, the zone input with the multimeter, I was seeing some really weird things um, with the voltage and continuity going through there, um, which you wouldn't expect any voltage on, on one of these lines, really. Um, if the panel zone isn't connected to it and then there's some also some other circuitry that's inside of the stations um, there's two rows of circuit boards in there so it's really complicated um, and that circuitry I can't really pin down as to what it would do in terms of the station if it's operating the way I think it is so maybe there's something more to that name decimal code transmitter and these are actually transmitting these pulses back to the panel in a different format than simply just you know opening and closing the circuit but Obviously, these are older. It wouldn't be like any sort of digital transmission, but I'm wondering if there's something else that works with that end-of-line circuitry to maybe instead of uh, actually opening and closing the circuit, it just maybe reduces the voltage or something along those lines. But hopefully I can figure it out and make these usable to uh, work as a coded pole station. But anyways, um, let's go ahead and see one of these run. So I'm going to start off by pulling the E model from this series and we'll see the light on the front come on and the code wheel go around and pulse out the code onto the circuit.
So now it's gone through all of its rounds of code and we can open it up and reset the handle. So just like on the S464 series, you just insert a screwdriver in the top and it opens up. You can see the incandescent light there and there's a test button for the station directly under there. That essentially has the same impact um, as just pulling the pull station, although I know it messes around with the relays a little bit differently, I think, because with this station, when you activate the handle, you can see this reset button up here. This pull station won't actually reset from the alarm being pulled, um, but it'll reset from a test condition. And the reason that I, I can't get it to reset from an alarm is because if you see in the back here, there's this end of line resistor. You can connect other con uh, conventional pull stations to this. Um, with that additional loop, which is supervised with that end of line resistor. I'm, I still haven't been able to exactly nail down what the uh, resistance value for that should be. Right now I have a 33 kilo ohm resistor on there, which Honeywell and Bosch Radionics used really commonly, so I decided to try it out. It's close enough to fool the station um, before it's been activated, but once the station's been activated, that loop won't reset based on the positions of the contacts within the station. It seems like that won't let it um, come back out of alarm, but I have the model number for that, what that resistor should be, but that model number is long gone from any online documentation. So for now, if it's activated by the um, alarm handle, this pole station just has to be reset by power cycling it. Um, on the other hand, the other pull station does reset fine because that works on a class A loop instead of an underline resistor and obviously for the class A loop I could just wire it back to itself and that takes all doubt about the wiring out of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So moving on over to the other pull station now, this is the W54A1002. Now this might be just about the strangest fire alarm device that I've ever seen or owned um, because the handle on the front of it quite literally does nothing and I'm pretty sure it was manufactured that way. So you can pull this handle all day long. It does nothing because there is no circuitry or mechanical components in there to make that handle work and that's why I have the S464A wired onto the side of it. So if I pop this station open real quick, or at least attempt to, there we go. Oops. You'll see it has the reset button, the indicator, and the test button, just like the other station. But the alarm button is entirely missing. And you can see there's no lettering to indicate where the alarm button would be. And then on the inside of the station, if I zoomed in really close on the circuit board, the alarm button is actually a normally closed switch. So when you pull the pull station, it opens that contact as, it push, as it's like pushed down by the handle. So there's a trace on the circuit board where the switch contacts would be that is um, cut into the circuit board, I guess you would say, from the factory to short that switch connection out permanently. So there is, there's no way that there was ever a switch there that was removed because they actually took the time to short out that switch contact. And I'll zoom in here in a second so you can see what I'm talking about. And now that I've zoomed in on the station and have it open, I notice that the, uh, the model number is dash 1001-2, not 1001-2. But anyways, you can see in there on the board that top um, area of solder trace. That's where on the other station, one side of the switch is wired. And you can see that trace running down on the circuit board. That connects to the other trace where on the other station, the other contact of the switch is wired. So that connection there is permanently shorted out on this station. The other thing is that on the back of the handle, um, I'll go ahead and switch back to the other view for a second. We can take a look at that. If we look at the back side of the handle here, there was never any plate installed here to reach in and activate that switch. And if we look up here at these two rivet holes that are empty, there was never a spring installed in the station to retain that handle. And I've looked at all these parts 
really closely to see if there's any sign that it was removed or used for parts. And I honestly can't find anything that would indicate that this station is any different than how it was manufactured out of the factory. And the fact that it has that big long model number, you know, continuation after the base model number, because this station should just be W854A, uh, and that should be it. The other station doesn't have any suffixes on the model number. That leads me to believe that something is odd with this pulse station. But like I said, it does have a class A loop um, on the back of it for connecting a conventional pull station. So if I go ahead and pull the S464A here, it activates and runs the rear of the module just like the uh, other station does. And like I said, on this model, the reset button does work. So if I go ahead and reset the S464A, and here you can see that does have a spring up there um, to hold the handle in place that this other station lacks. And if I go ahead and hit the reset button, you'll see that the light extinguishes, um, but the code wheel continues turning because it has to return back to, I guess you'd call it the home position, where um, so that the next time it would get activated, it like... Um, it starts off at the beginning of the four rounds of code because there's another wheel who, that spins slightly off behind the code wheel that has some tracks cut into it that are followed by contacts. That's how the station tracks where it is on the coding cycle and allows it to only run the specified number of codes. This one also has a test button below the light, so if I push this, it'll go back into alarm. I can reset that away, and you can see the code wheel returns back to spinning. It stopped when I hit test because that just creates a, a continuous, I guess you call it a continuous pulse out on the loop. So that button just bypasses the, the coding process altogether. Um, this has some battery test instructions off to the side where a battery could be attached right in here. Um, I'm not sure what the function of that is. I might have to take a closer look at that. The terminals for that battery are kind of stuffed back into the station a little bit. So that's another thing on this unit where I'm not sure if that was ever really used, but everything for that is intact, and maybe that's something I can look into figuring out how exactly that works in the future. So like I said, this is going to continue running back all through its rounds of code um, until it reaches the position where it's ready to start again. There is a relay that in a situation like this where if it's not back to its position um, but the station isn't in alarm, it's actually not transmitting anything out onto that coded circuit. So um, the station is not causing an alarm on the system at this point. If it were installed, it's just returning back to where it is. So we'll wait for this to go back to where it belongs. You can watch it go around a little bit and then I'll pull the other one back over here and again follow up with a couple final comments and then end the video. And there it is, back to where it belongs, and we can go ahead and shut the cover. So that just about wraps this up. Thank you guys for watching. Um, these are really, really cool devices, and I'm glad that I was able to uh, jump on them and buy them when I could. Uh, one of my favorite things about these is the fact that the wiring diagram for the series is actually etched into the plastic cover on the back of one of the circuit boards. So all of the notes and wiring instructions and everything, but unfortunately not the uh, end-line resistor values, are printed onto this plastic cover that is on every single pull station, and that really helped with identifying all of the wiring connections and such because, as you can see on the back of these, wiring harness bundles. There's a ton of connections that go into these pull stations and obviously you can see that from the wiring diagram as well. So thanks again for watching and have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions or comments or uh, if anybody else knows exactly how to make these work um, as intended, please let me know in the comments. So see you guys.